What's up everybody, Tiankum here with Soyak Quilting. Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you make this beautiful quilt behind me using Vegas strips. Let's get started. So before you ask, what is a Vegas strip? Simply put, this is a custom pre-cut that we make here at Soyak Quilting, which is six and a half inches wide by length of fabric. Normally speaking, our Vegas strips have anywhere between 20 to 21 pieces in them. So consider it as a jumbo jelly roll. These have gotten a lot of traction over the last many months here. And what's happened is you guys out there have used up some of your jelly rolls and you end up with these kind of odd strips or maybe that you only used 12 out of your 21. Things like that are happening. And so we wanna show you how you can use these to make a smaller quilt, but a beautiful one using these extra pieces. Pop open up one of these guys and we're only pulling out nine strips today. So you just need nine strips of a dark or your print and nine strips of your light. And you'll also find out here that there have been many collections that have come out that we've sold. Now, there are 10 pieces of these lighter colors and 10 pieces of kind of the prints of the collection, which would work beautifully for this project as well. So guys, with nine pieces of a print and nine of a solid, we are ready to get started here. And the cutting instructions for both sides are exactly the same. And down in the description below, as always, there's a free download that you can just go ahead and download off for yourself. That way you can follow along. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop these down into three inch squares and six and a half inch squares for both of these. So I'm gonna start with this darker piece here. So guys, what we need is we need four six and a half by six and a half inch squares. Super easy to cut. I've got a six and a half inch ruler here and I'm gonna just cut on both sides, one and two. That way I have my six and a half inch square there. I'm gonna do the same thing here. And then I need three three inch squares. And now the way that I'm going to achieve this is I'm gonna just cut these into three inch strips and I'll sub cut them down from there. And guys, that right there is the waist of your product there. And obviously it's a good piece of fabric. We're gonna go ahead and save that. And now I'm gonna just cut these into three inch squares. So I'm gonna double stack. And now with all of your strips, both the colored and the white, we're gonna do the exact same thing too. Four six and a half inch squares, eight three inch squares. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So guys, it's now time to start assembling this block. What we're gonna do is I need two whites and two of these darker colors here. And I'm going to just draw a line on them corner to corner like we've been doing. And now guys, with that, we're gonna take one white piece and one of the darker pieces. And super simple, the white pieces get put on like this, where it's the bottom left corner of the line that I drew to the top right corner going across and the exact same thing on the white square. And we're gonna sew directly on top of that line. First one done, going on to the next one. Using our rotary cutter, I'm going to just go ahead and cut one quarter inch away from that seam line that we just did. This will ensure that we get a really nice crisp iron. Now we're gonna iron this. Now we want iron to the dark side as we normally do. Now guys, the next step is to take our ruler here and we're gonna cut directly across this. Now, the few of you out there that just realized what that means, that means we have a biased edge now. Now, what a biased edge means is that if you are straight with the grain of fabric, it doesn't stretch very much, okay? But when you cut something on a bias or so cross grain, it begins to stretch a little bit more. Now, in quilting, we avoid this at all. If any way we can avoid a bias edge, we try to avoid it. Now, there's a simple workaround. We don't have to make this too crazy. I'm gonna take this over back to my ironing board and all I'm gonna do is starch it. Starching takes up most of the stretch in material, and if you're worried about it, starch it heavily. The biggest thing is don't pull the fabric as you're sewing. That's rule number, or that's sewing 101 for most people out there. Don't pull the fabric as you sew. So I'm gonna go ahead and starch this real good so I can show you guys how easy it is if you just add a little starch. Starched. That was what, two seconds of starch? Three seconds of starch? Hit it with a little bit of iron. I'm a clapper user myself, so I'm gonna clap 
as much as I can of that. I want it to be like that. As long as you put a little bit of starch in it, it can be just fine and you can do it without it. This one was sewn without any starch. You can see how it turned out. It was beautiful. So you can see now the stretch was taken out of that. And all I'm gonna do now is pull out my ruler. I'm gonna chop this all the way down corner to corner on the main portion of the fabric. The portion that has the most of that color in it is what I wanna do. We are not cutting it across the colors, only on one of the colors. Also, tidbit here, don't starch after you cut. Starch it first and then cut, okay? Now, all we're gonna do here now is we're gonna put these two corners are touching like this. Take this one here and here, and then we're gonna start sewing. With the actual way that we're gonna be sewing this and the reason why we've turned it this way, these edges are not on the bias. And same with these ones. These ones are not on the bias. So just in the nature of the way that we put this block together, is there a little bit of bias sewing? Not like yes, but it's really only this seam going through that will be a little bit on the bias. And so it's a simple, simple and easy one to piece together. And again, starch it and it's just fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew these two together, these two together, and I'm gonna sew then the two sets together. Do the same thing on this side. Now I'm gonna open up the seam in this particular case, simply just because we are dealing with two different colors on each side, it will look the best. Is this a necessary step? Probably not. I just want everyone to look at those points. I mean, beautiful, right? These are crisp, crisp, crisp. Now I'm gonna just put these together and we're gonna sew all the way down. And since I opened up the seams there, I'm gonna do the same here. And so guys, what I'm gonna also do here, just cause it drives me nuts, is I'm gonna cut off my dog ears and then I'll give you the big reveal. And guys, just like that, your quilt block is finished. Now, isn't it a beautiful block? Simple technique, nothing too complex there, only using really two Vega strips or six and a half inch squares and three and a half inch squares. And it looks especially good in scrappy, right? A lot of us have these scrap bins that we don't know what to do with. We got all these extra layer cake pieces that we never used. Come down to six inch squares. Go ahead and snowball off the edges and make this beautiful block here. And if you've liked this week's video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new and don't be afraid to share it with your friends. As always, down in the description below, there's a free PDF download. And while you're down there, click on soyaquilting.com where you can pick yourselves up some Vegas strips, which is the number one pre-cut in the world right now. That's a lie, but we're trying to make sure it gets up there. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.